Good day. One of the most great paradoxes of the latest crisis, if it is even a crisis, is that even as the Russians insist incessantly that they have no plans to invade Ukraine and make no threats against that country, and even as the Western powers continue to insist somewhat against Ukraine's own wishes that Russia does indeed harbour such plans, the Western powers are rushing to speak to President Putin and to his government in Moscow, transforming Moscow into a centre, the centre, the world capital of international diplomacy. So today, as I make this video, President Macron of France is flying to Moscow, having had four telephone conversations with President Putin, in which he has discussed the Ukrainian issue, the general issue of security in Europe, and is clearly engaged in a negotiation with the Russians on all of these, on all of these issues. And in a couple of days' time, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz will also be flying to Moscow as well. This, of course, comes after a flying visit to Washington, D.C. A German Chancellor is, at the moment, still politically limited. Uh, Germany, of course, hosts U.S. troops. Nuclear weapons are apparently... U.S. nuclear weapons are still stored in Germany. And, of course, a German Chancellor realistically cannot speak to the Russians, can't visit Moscow until and unless he's made a ritual trip to Washington, D.C. and met with the U.S. president there, which is from all the accounts and information that is pouring out of Schultz's mis about Schultz's visit to Washington. It's what is actually happening. The ritual visit is the one to Washington, the actual visit, the meaningful one, will be the one that Schultz shortly makes to Moscow. And if these two important European leaders are heading to Moscow, well, another person is also heading, Mos is also Moscow bound, and that is British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss. Now, it should be said this is the first trip by a British Foreign Secretary to Moscow since Boris Johnson, as Foreign Secretary, visited Moscow in 2017, where he failed dismally in his uh, uh, facing off with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. But um, notwithstanding all of that, notwithstanding the long diplomatic boycott that the British have applied against the Russians, Liz Truss is also travelling to Moscow to meet Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. And at some point, it's not exactly clear when, apparently later this month, British Defence Secretary Ben Wallace will also be flying to Moscow to meet Russian Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu. I should perhaps say that the decision of the British government to send Liz Truss to Moscow has come in for some criticism in Britain. Um, the former Conservative uh, Minister, Robert Jenrick, has actually said that he thinks Liz Truss's visit to Moscow is unwise. For my part, I think it's not just, it's not so much unwise as superfluous. I can't see what exactly it is the British hope to achieve by these contacts with the Russians, um, I suspect that this is all a desperate attempt by the British to achieve some kind of relevance um, at a time when it's increasingly obvious to any detached observer that they've become wholly marginalised from the diplomacy. Anyway, the main focus, the primary interest, is in what President Macron is doing. And President Macron has stirred concerns and worries in some NATO capitals, including, I suspect, London, but also perhaps possibly among some people, at least in Washington, and certainly amongst the NATO and EU bureaucracies, 
by giving a very, very interesting interview before he flies to Moscow to Le Journal de Dimanche, a French uh, magazine. I'm providing a link to the original French, it, to the, in, the original interview in French, but of course it's been widely reported and talked about elsewhere. And the interview is really absolutely extraordinary because first of all it criticizes the EU Council, the other member states of the European Union, for blocking the initiatives that he, that's to say Macron, together with Angela Merkel, made last year for a Russia-EU summit, a summit meeting between Russia and the EU Council. That meeting was blocked by the East European states and also by the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte and um, Macron um, says that the result of the decision not to engage with the Russians in that meeting is that others, and of course he means by this the Americans, are now talking to the Russians on behalf of Europe instead of the Europeans themselves, and that this closing off of a route towards a discussion was already a mistake and I think people in the Baltic states, in Poland and in Brussels will be reading those comments with considerable dismay and I suspect that Mark Rutte, who played an absolutely key role in blocking that meeting, will be extremely angry when he reads those comments. But beyond that, Mr. Uh, uh, um, Ma Monsieur Macron, Mr. Macron, has made other comments which perhaps are going to concer concern European leaders even further. He has said that it is not Russia's intention to take over Ukraine. That's not the major uh, focus of Russian diplomacy. The major focus is Russia's desire for legally binding security guarantees. It is the relationship between Russia and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, between Russia and NATO, which mostly concerns the Russians. And alarmingly for some people, Macron has talked about the Russians having legitimate security interests. Now, if we go back to be the kind of comments that have been made by people like NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, he, they've spoken about the Russians having no right to veto, no right to a say, no, um, abs no right at all to talk about these issues. And we now have more discussions, more hints from the um, 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 French about what exactly he has in mind and I'm now reading from the Financial Times and um, in advance of this trip that uh, Macron is making to R Moscow and the Financial Times says that Macron's advisers say his approach is to persevere with Normandy format talks between Russia, Ukraine, France and Germany over the Russian-backed separatists in eastern Ukraine. I wish, by the way, Western governments would stop referring to these people as separatists. They're not, at the moment, at least not overtly, seeking separation from Ukraine. They're seeking special status, extensive autonomy within Ukraine. I make that observation because this expression, separatists, is a Ukrainian one. And the better and more quickly it is dropped, the more easy the diplomacy will be. Anyway, to continue, Macron's advisers say his approach is to persevere with Normandy Ford talks between Russia, Ukraine, France and Germany to try to persuade Moscow to pull back its forces. Well, I don't think there's much chance of that because the Russians will say that they don't have any forces positioned on Ukraine's borders to pull back and tone down its efforts to destabilise Ukraine. 
What efforts? The Russians, as I said, are denying that they're threatening Ukraine in any way. And then comes the absolutely loaded part and finally forge a new long-term security arrangement for Europe. Now that is, those last words are going to ring serious alarm bells in Western capitals because what is these long-term security arrangements for Europe? What is that intended to imply? Is that in effect an agreement that Moscow, that Russia should be given the long-term binding security guarantees that it is seeking? Well, it rather looks like that. I mean, it's difficult to see how it can mean anything less if it is to mean anything meaningful at all. So Macron, despite going out of his way to assure everybody that he's talk to everybody, that he's got everybody's agreements. He's had a long conversation with President Biden of the United States. He's undoubtedly liaising closely with the Germans. I'm, pro I'm sure, by the way, that Olaf Schulz is off on message. And it is surely not a coincidence that Schulz is on his way to Moscow just a few days after Macron goes there. Um, Anyway, I'm sure that this is where we're heading, uh, a European initiative for long-term security guarantees in Europe. And I can't help but think that in Macron's mind, at least, this fits in with his own agenda for a EU-led European security architecture, perhaps with a European army, perhaps involving some kind of relationship with Russia and a downgrading of the importance of NATO, perhaps eventually a dismantling of NATO entirely, which, of course, Macron, with his famous comment made some years back about NATO being brain dead, probably wouldn't be too sorry to see. So this looks like the kind of negotiation which is now underway. It seems to me that Macron has seized the chance opened for him by this artificial crisis that the Americans and the British, with all this flesh-creeping talk about a Russian invasion of Ukraine, have engendered. Uh, um, and he's going to seize the chance offered by this so-called crisis to advance his agenda strategic autonomy from Europe, strategic autonomy from the Anglo-Americans, a marginalization of the Anglo-Americans. His idea of a new security architecture, bringing together France and Germany at its core with perhaps a European army and some kind of general relationship with Russia to balance it all out. And the Russians, for their part, are receptive. Now, um, Dmitry Peskov, Putin's spokesman, has been speaking. And he said that the Kremlin expects the talks to be long, to take a long time, and uh, to be substantive. However, Peskov said that one shouldn't expect a watershed moment. In other words, not a breakthrough. He said that the situation is too complex to expect some sort of breakthrough during just one meeting. And there's apparently also going to be, or the plan is that there should be a, uh, a joint press conference in the evening, one with Putin, who's just returned from Beijing, by the way, one from Putin with bringing together Putin and Macron. So they're going to engage in a joint press conference, which by the way, also suggests a measure of agreement between them. And um, um, the we, we hear from the French that it will be, in fact, Russia's demands for security guarantees from the West, which will naturally dominate the discussion, at least, and, and Peskov has confirmed that. 
So this is an interesting discussion. We'll see what comes of it um, and we will see where it goes. But again, Macron is peppering things. He said to uh, l uh, with, with comments indicative of a intention to negotiate seriously. He told Le Journal du Dimanche, we have to be very realistic. We will not obtain unilateral gestures, but it's essential to stop the situation deteriorating. So, realistic? That means realistic, presumably about Russian security guarantees. Well, I don't know where all this is going. Maybe it's not going to end anywhere at all. As I said, at the moment, the Russians are in no mood to make concessions because, well, what concessions do they need to make? I reiterate again, they are not threatening Ukraine. They're not saying they have any plan to invade Ukraine at all. So what exactly are they expected to concede? <laughs> make another statement that they're not going to invade Ukraine? <laughs> Whatever. So there will be discussions, there will be a meeting in Moscow, perhaps um, more discussions are going to take place. The French are leading the way. The Americans will have to follow. If there are real moves on the part of the French and the Germans to agree with the Russians, this new security architecture for Europe, then the United States can't objectively veto this, they will be trapped into negotiations, which perhaps they didn't really want at the outset, about these legally binding security guarantees, about agreeing this overarching security architecture for Europe. And I've already discussed how the written replies, the US's written replies to the Russians actually go much further towards the Russian positions than has been widely um, interpreted or accepted. If you pass the US written replies, that becomes clear that the Americans are in fact, perhaps because they're worried that Macron might take the initiative from them, that um, the Americans are actually prepared to discuss issues with the Russians about legally binding security guarantees, about an end to NATO's eastward expansion, about intermediate nuclear forces, uh, missiles and basing of missiles, about inspections, things which just a few weeks or months ago, it would have been inconceivable that the United States would want to discuss. So there we are. It's all very interesting how all this is shaping out. I wonder what the people who created this crisis in Washington and London are making of all of this, whether they're angry or whether they're dismayed or whether they're feverishly looking for ways to try to block these French initiatives. But it does seem to me extremely strange that having initiated this crisis, which was clearly intended in some way to box the Russians in by talk of a Russian invasion of Ukraine, which is not threatened, the United States and the British now increasingly look as if they may become isolated themselves and might force be trapped into a negotiation which the likes of which they had never imagined. Anyway, there we go. We shall see what comes of Monsieur Macron's trip to Moscow. We will see what happens when Chancellor Schulz goes to Moscow too. We will see what kind of discussions take place there. Short video, more from me on this topic fairly soon. We will get this press conference presumably later today and I will obviously be covering it here on this channel. Um, when we get the more details as they come through. Thank you for joining me again today. I look forward to you joining me again soon. 
in other programs, both on this channel and on our, uh, on our main channel, The Duran. And by the way, if you're following this program on uh, Rumble, um, please uh, notice the maroon button at the top of this video. That will take you, if you press it, that will take you directly to our locals page. Rumble and locals are now fully integrated with each other. And you will find lots of ex exciting activity on our locals page. We will find us there. You will find much exclusive content that we do there. And of course, I do live streams on locals every day. So by all means, look us up on Rumble and on locals. And of course, we're also present on other uh, platforms as well. You can find links under this video. You can support us via Patreon and Subscribestar. You can also go to our shop and buy the things that you, amazing things you will find there. Our, 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 our sweatshirts, t-shirts, hats, hoodies, and all the rest. And of course, if you've liked this video, please remember to press the like button and please, um, and please also check your subscription to this channel. Thank you for joining me again today. Short video for once. Look forward to speaking to you again soon after we hear from Mr. Putin and Mr. Macron. Thank you again and have a good day.